Good morning, Grace Chapel. All right. Are you all ready for a good pageant play, Christmas, about Jesus? They put a lot of work into this. There's a whole two, two practices. <laughs> one, one night, but two, we went through it twice. Yeah, we went through it twice. It's going to be good, gang. It's going to be really good. So, uh, announcements. You got your bulletins. You see what's going on tonight's candlelight service, 630. So, I encourage you all to come out for that. Uh, it's going to be real meaningful. And uh, we're remembering the reason for the season. Uh, the 31st, uh, we're trying to put together something a little different. Something never done that before type thing, you know. But uh, get together on uh, Christmas Eve and play some games and uh, possibly usher in the New Year's to see how it goes, all right? Uh, feeding My Lambs is doing well. Continue to remember that in prayer and do, uh, offer do what the Lord directs you to do, all right? So uh, I'm at this time, uh, lest I'm missing any announcements, are we good to go, gang? All right, I'm going to ask Pastor Neil if he'll open the word of prayer. Bow with me. Father, we thank you for a new day. We thank you for uh, the celebration we have and our, uh, the birth of your, uh, our Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray that as we uh, meet together now that we'd enjoy uh, seeing you work in all of our lives. And we ask that you'd guide all the, the different ones involved and help us to uh, have our hearts open to you. And we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. All right, we're going to go ahead and ask our ushers to take their places this time. We're going to do the morning tithes and offerings. All right, guys, come on down. Brother Cameron, you ask a blessing. Heavenly Father, thank you for your love and care for us. We bring a little bit back, Father, of what you bless us with each week. May it be used to the further to your kingdom and to bless other people and bring them into the kingdom. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Nettie has been our director of our, our pageant this morning. I'll ask her to stand and give us a little bit of a background of what, what it's about. All right. Um, we also, we put something in the bulletin, but for those that are watching on uh, Facebook Live, we're going to take a look into a grandma and grandpa's house on a Sunday afternoon after church, and they're planning on getting ready for Christmas and decorating their tree, but they get a phone call from one of their kids 
as we grandparents sometimes do, that changes their plans a little bit. So um, it shows the importance of grandparents and the involvement with their grandkids. So that's what the play's about. And I know uh, Pastor Neil had, uh, he was gonna do a morning, an opening prayer this morning, or oh, we already did that, see, I am. <laughs> this is what is flustering when I have a bunch of kids in the back room and I'm thinking, oh, wait a minute, did I forget something? This was what happens when you have all, all these kids in here. You get one practice one night. <laughs> so anyhow, um, we are almost ready. Looks like I'm getting a sign from back there. They need a couple more minutes. But, <laughs> but we're almost ready to go. We're, um, oh, I think we are ready. I think Grandma and Grandpa finally got back from church service. <laughs> so it just tells you how good it's going to be. Enjoy. All right, come on, Grandma and Grandpa. Well, that sermon was great. The food was good, too. I'm ready to practice being a saint. You know, S-A-I-N-T, Sunday afternoon is nap time. Oh, no. Oh, no, you're not. We are going to decorate that Christmas tree. Hello? Oh, yes, that would be great. We'd be glad to. We're just getting ready to decorate the tree. They can help. Okay, see you soon. Bye. Who was that? Bella. Bella who? Your daughter, Bella? Oh. Yeah. She doing some Christmas shopping for me, is she? She is. Yeah. She's going to bring the girls over. Come in. your best behavior all right they're getting old so no fighting please and I think they're decorating the tree so please don't break anything okay hi good to see you I can't stay I have to get going the stores are crazy busy okay all right thanks for watching them be good girls. Grandpa, would you go get the decorations out of the garage? Mm, okay, okay. Hey girls. Hey girls, come on up. Good to see you. You girls can help decorate our tree. Mom never lets us help. Yeah, mom is always afraid we will break something. Well, you'll have to be careful because some things are fragile. You can get comfortable, girls. Okay. Oh. Um, these aren't decorations. These are just really old cards. Grandpa, you grabbed the wrong box. Mm. Look at this one. It has a Christmas tree on it. What do trees even have to do with Christmas? Well. Which way the tree pointing? Up. Three points remind us about Jesus. He came to tell us about his Father God in heaven. He came to point the way to heaven. The Christmas tree is not without lights. Jesus is the light of the world. He shines the light on the truth of how to come to God. And the tree is evergreen. It stays green when all other trees lose their leaves. It reminds us that God is eternal. He always is and always will be. 
Oh, that's what the tree has to do with Christmas. Join us as we sing the Christmas tree. think I'm that old? <laughs> if you notice, that baby's in a wooden box called a manger. What's a manger, and why is that baby in it? Well, the best way for me to tell you that is just to read from the Bible. This is Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out to the city of Nazareth and to Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. Because he, was out of the, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. You see, the inn had no room for Mary and Joseph to stay in. Jesus was born in a stable, placed in a manger for a bed. This reminds me of people today who leave no room in their heart for Jesus. Amen. Mm-hmm. 
Hey, Grandma, it's angels. I love angels. Angels were created by God, and they have special jobs to do. These angels have a very important message to announce to the whole world. The message was about a newborn king. Remember the one we just told you all about? He was born in a stable and put in a manger. Wow, that was an important message to send angels for. Let me read you something from the Bible. Luke 2, 8 through 18. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was an angel, a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. So it was, when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, and the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds.
call these people on the cards? They're called shepherds. But what is a crooked stick in their hand? It kind of looks like a candy cane. The shepherd used the crooked stick to reach down and rescue or lift lambs that had fallen into a ditch or, in, or onto the cliff. Girls, I'm going to hand you a candy cane. Here, Eddie. Bailey. There you go. The candy cane is a symbol of Jesus, the good shepherd, and how he reached down and rescued us from our sin. The white reminds us that Jesus is pure and holy. The red is for the blood he shed for our sins. The shepherds were the first ones the angels told about Jesus, and they were so excited when they saw him. They could not keep the good news to themselves. They told everyone they could. are from the wise men. They studied the prophecy which told about a new star that would appear when God's son was born. They were so excited when they saw the star, they followed the star right to Jesus. They also brought gifts with them, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Franken who? <laughs> frankincense. It's a symbol of a divine name. Jesus is that name. Gold is a precious, valuable metal that is fitting present for a king. And myrrh was a fancy, expensive perfume. Oh 
The best gift to all of us from God is Jesus. He was sent to rescue us from punishment for our sins. Jesus did that by dying on the cross. But just like any other gift, we need to accept him in order to use it. enjoyed the program. Um, some of the gals in the back room were corralling all the little kids, uh, chasing them around. So they, they deserve uh, an extra applause. But uh, didn't they do a great job? Let me hear. hear, hear. <laughs> um, 
All right. Well, I just had a few things I want to want to share. I'm Pastor Neil, and uh, on this, there's there's baby Jesus, but I'm gonna close the door here. See if you can sleep better. <laughs> and uh, so some of you might be sleepy now. I'll try not to put you to sleep too quickly. Thank you. All right. Uh, on this, on our door, it says the season, and then there's a, a, a wreath, and then it says the reason. And if you notice, there's, uh, there's two parts to that wreath. And the first is uh, all green and, and uh, reminds us of Christmas. But the other part is all dry and, and uh, got, uh, has all kinds of little um, thorns. Thank you. See, they know, you guys, that when I'm up here, I stop once in a while, and somebody else has to tell me what I'm going to say next. So that's good. So that, especially the young people, they're, they're, they know what's going on. Well, what I wanted to do was talk about this, what child this is that we've talked about today already. And I want to think about uh, why he came. Uh, it's a season. Uh, I think we've all been seeing and be, been reminded of Christmas for several weeks now. Uh, sometime it's even before Thanksgiving, and other times it's just uh, around uh, uh, October and Halloween. But uh, so you uh, you got to see a, a play that these these uh, folks put on, and I just want to share a few things, and uh, and then we'll we'll dismiss that um, there are prophecies given in the Old Testament about this coming Savior, the one we have been talking about. Isaiah verse seven, uh, chapter 7, verse 14 says this, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign, and behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall ca call his name Emmanuel. And uh, later on in chapter, three, or chapter 9 of Isaiah, it goes on and says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And of his increase, of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, in order it, uh, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice, from that time forward, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. And so, in the Old Testament... There's this prediction about this one who's coming, and those are things that uh, we saw, the titles that he has, um, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, and so on. But the one that I think hits us most is the Prince of Peace. Uh, we live in a day and age where there's not a lot of peace in this world. You just turn on the news for a couple minutes, and all of a sudden you see how things are, are in bad shape all over the world. Wars and, and uh, famines and all those things are there. And, and you kind of wonder, okay, Maybe at Christmas time we, we, we can be a little kinder than we've been, a little uh, less judgmental, and uh, we find ourselves maybe able to do that as we think about the birth of this, this one Jesus who came. And so what we need to understand is that he, he, come, he came not just to stay as a little baby, but there's other prophecies in the Old Testament from uh, 2 Samuel chapter 7. It says here, when your days are fulfilled, and you rest with your fathers. Here is God talking to David, the king of the Old Testament. I will set you, I will set um, up your seed after you. You will have, you will come from, he who will come from. Not only did I forget, I can't see very well. Um, behold, get back up here. I will set you up your seed after you who will come from your body, and I will establish his kingdom, and he shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever, and from and your house and your kingdom shall be established forever before you. Your throne shall be established forever. That's God's promise to David and his uh, descendants. And, and there's, this, there's this waiting period <clears throat> that the people of Israel were always looking for the day when this Messiah would come, when, uh, when he would turn things right, he would do away with all, all the hurt and pain in the world, 
And so they looked for that for years and years. And then finally, the angel Gabriel spoke to Mary, and part of his long speech says this, and the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you, you have found favor with God, and behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and you shall name, name, call his name Jesus, for he will be great, and we call the son of the highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And so that, that announcement by, by Gabriel was saying that the one who you've been waiting for for centuries and centuries and centuries is finally going to come. Just like Isaiah prophesied, just like uh, God told them hundreds of years before. And so now it's the time we celebrate the birth of Christ. He is not just a normal Baby, he is, he is the Son of God. He is the one and only Son of God. And he will sit on the throne of his father David. So this, this expectation for this king, this leader who would, would change our lives, would change all that we do, was, was carried through uh, historically through the Old Testament. And now that promised one is finally coming. And that's what that happened 2,000 years ago. And uh, as... Gabriel talks to Joseph. It says, and while Joseph thought about these things that he'd heard about Mary, uh, behold, an angel Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, descendant of David, do not be afraid um, to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And then he goes on and says, and, you shall, and she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which he spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child, and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated is God with us. And so Joseph has just got word that this, this king, this this Savior is going to come that we've been waiting for all these centuries, and Mary's going to give birth to him, and he will, he will change the world. And that's exactly what he's done, and he'll continue to do that. Uh, but what I wanted to think about is this idea that he is, he is the descendant of David, the king of Israel, the king over all kings forever and ever. And uh, it's interesting because... We celebrate with the green and the, the, all the festivities that go with making that, that look beautiful and think about the good things that God has done for us, and we should. That God loves us. He cares for us. He sent his son for a purpose. It wasn't just to, to, to show us a little baby. Uh, that's a great thing to know because what it says is that God fulfills his word in sending the one who'd been promised for all these years. Finally, he is coming. And from our perspective, he has come. But here's something at the end of his life. It says this. After Jesus was arrested and tried, falsely accused, this one that was a baby 30 years earlier, approximately, is now standing as a convicted criminal. In Matthew chapter 27, we have this account. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the praetorium, that's like an auditorium, like we, they did things in, in a, for a crowd, into the praetorium and gathered the whole garrison around him. A whole troop of soldiers were there in this building around Jesus. And they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. How embarrassing, how frustrating, how Amazing that Jesus didn't respond to any of this. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and when they had twisted a crown of thorns, they like the bottom of our wreath up here, with the sharp points all around there, they put it in his, on his head. And a reed in his right hand, and they bowed the knee before him, and they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They're giving him that 
affirmation that who he really is, but they're doing it in just a, as mocking him. Who do you think you are, calling yourself a king? Any of you are king of Israel. We've, con we've defeated you. We're the Romans. We run the world. And so they mock him by saying, Hail, king of the Jews. Then they spat on him. They spat on him. And took the reed and struck him. They struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they took the robe off him, put his own clothes on him, and led him away to be crucified. You see, Jesus came to give us this season of joy and expectation and the fact that God really cares about us and he proved it when he sent his son. But he came to die, as this, uh, cr those thorns remind us, that Jesus came not just to stay in the manger, but he came to do what he promised to do, and that was to give us the forgiveness that we need. And he alone could do that for us. The Bible tells us in, in Romans 3.23 that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That means I've sinned, you've sinned, we've broken God's commandments, we've disappointed, we've rebelled against God. That's who we are, and that's what we've done. Romans 6.23 says the wages of sin is death. What we earn because of our sin is death or separation from God. That we can't know God or have this relationship with God uh, on our own. We can't do that. And Romans 5, 8 says, but God commends his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You see, Jesus Christ came. He lived a life on this earth like every other human being, although he was Fully human, he's also fully God, and we'll never, we'll never comprehend that. But being fully God, he could deal with our sins. And so the first thing that God wants us to, to recognize is that we are sin, sinful people, that we have, we have uh, rebelled against him in our heart in some way or another. And there's none righteous, no, not one, uh, Romans goes on to say. And Jesus says in, in John 14, verse 6, he says, I am the way the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. He's making a bold statement saying, if you want a relationship with God, if you want forgiveness from God, you have to come through me. You have to believe in me. I am that way and the truth and the life. And then in John 1.12 it says, but as many as receive him, to them gave you the right to become children of God, even to those that call on his name. So you see, we live in a world that's all, always changing. It becomes chaotic in our lives, things we didn't expect. We, we hear terrible things in the news. We've, we've, we've lost loved ones or people that we've known because, uh, because the world is, is broken. And Jesus Christ alone can change that, but he doesn't change it or force us to follow him. He invites us to follow him. He invites us to, uh, to ask him to be our Savior. And the moment we do that, the moment we say, Lord Jesus, would you come into my heart and be my Savior, and I want to live for you, and you mean that, and you invite him in, then he begins a new work in you. And you know, it's, it's our learning how to live through the power of God's spirit, honoring Jesus Christ that causes the, the change that takes place in the world. It, because we can, we can individually love just so many people around us, but that makes an impact, and those who follow Christ should always be trying to help people see Jesus that it's not just that baby in the manger, but I'm, I'm so glad he came. And I really appreciate the, the work that has been in uh, to make this play, to focus on different aspects of what it means to follow Christ. But uh, I'm, I'm thankful you came today, and I hope that you have been blessed. And, and maybe you already have a relationship with Christ. Maybe you've asked Christ to be your Savior. I hope that's true. But I'm gonna, if you bow with me, and I'm going to lead us in a prayer. And you can pray right there where you're sitting. And I'll lead it if you, if you would just follow along in your heart or mind, and then, uh, then I'll close that. So just bow with me for a moment. Father, I thank you that you are God who loves us. Thank you that you sent your son Jesus to live among us, to show us what a, a, a life filled with uh, truth and righteousness looks like. And Father, we thank you that uh, you saw our need, that we, we didn't have the power to change ourselves. And so, Father, we come to you, and Father, we ask that you would simply enter our lives, if we had not been there before, 
that say, Lord Jesus, please save me. Please take over my life and give me direction. And Father, if we pray those, th- those, that prayer, we know that you answer. And Father, what a great thing it is to, to be able to walk with Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for these young people that uh, worked hard on this, on this play. And thank you for all those who come to see it. And I just pray that as we walk out of this place today, we will be looking forward to knowing more about you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.